There are some who call it a conflict, others a campaign. But to those on the ground, it is simply a war. More than 1,000 rockets have been launched at Israel, more than 1,300 airstrikes in return. And the death count is beginning to inch toward the 200 mark. Today's edition of News Call returns to the Middle East, where there would appear to be no pullback in the level of violence. For some, the violence has become unbearable. Today, the U.S. evacuated its citizens with the help of the U.N. Making the journey was Palestinian-American Akram Mushteha and his family from Houston, Texas. They were here visiting relatives, but now too afraid to stay. Do you feel bad about leaving Gaza right now? Very. I'm leaving. Yes, my body is leaving. My heart is staying back home. My heart staying in Gaza. It was in the dead of night when several dozen Navy commandos, Israel's equivalent of the Navy SEALs, approached the Gaza shore from the Mediterranean Sea in small boats, surveillance planes and attack helicopters providing cover. The commandos destroyed a number of Hamas long-range rockets and launchers that have been targeting Israel's major cities. But Hamas militants spotted the team and opened fire. There was a huge engagement and we took out the capabilities and the terrorists. A group of pro-Israeli demonstrators were holding a peaceful rally when several men in a truck waving Palestinian flags stopped in the middle of Wilshire Boulevard and then started swinging their flag sticks at the pro-Israeli protesters hitting people. One of the flag sticks, I'm told, broke. A flag went on the ground and then a melee of sorts ensued in the moments following that. The men with flags jumped back in their truck and took off, according to that witness. That is when Homeland Security officers approached them. Then the witness said a Homeland Security officer fired one shot at the truck. It did not hit anybody, and at least one person was arrested. Uh, shortly before, a missile smashed into this house in Jabalia, northern Gaza. Shrapnel ripped a massive hole in the head of four-year-old Sahar Abu Namus at the hospital, his father hysterical with grief. Another father comforts a boy who witnessed Sahar's death. Some still looking fearfully toward the sky. The Israeli military continue their strikes in Gaza in the worst flare-up in Israeli-Palestinian violence in almost two years. Israeli aircraft and naval gunboats attacked 204 targets in the strip overnight, the army said. Palestinian health officials said at least 20 people were wounded. Palestinian militants fired more than 20 rockets into Israel, the Israeli military added, but no casualties were reported. The Israeli military is pounding the Gaza Strip for the fifth night in a row. With more than a thousand airstrikes, Israel says it's destroyed terrorist weaponry and command centers. But in reality, many of the targets are the homes of militants and civilians have become collateral damage. Officials here say two disabled girls were killed when this care home was hit by an airstrike early this morning. Scores of civilian deaths have stoked Palestinian anger and frustration. And on the border, Israel is massing its troops. There's no ground invasion yet, but the Israeli government won't rule it out. For much of the night, the wounded and the dead were brought into Shifa Hospital. It was the most sustained bombing so far. Gaza was pounded. For Israel, this is self-defense with American support. But as more civilians die, the pressure for a ceasefire is growing. Some numbers that we have coming in right now, and they're not exactly what you would consider to be very good. Because here's the numbers. Israel said its forces have struck 1,470 terror targets across Gaza, including 770 concealed rocket launchers. It is not necessarily the amount of terror targets that are being struck, because obviously between Hamas and Israel, there are bullets and missiles flying back and forth constantly. The one thing that is very disconcerting in all this is thus far, and this is according to reports now, 70% of the fatalities our civilians will continue to follow the story. So what can be done to shut down the missiles flying in the Middle East and at the very least bring Israel and Hamas to the stage of talking instead of fighting? That and more coming up next hour right here on Midpoint, where every day we question everything.